Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. We're doing a blueprint breakdown today, which is the series where I look at each individual variation of one particular blueprint. It's all very well and good watching a video that will tell you what the best ships in Infinite Lagrange are, but considering you have to unlock them and that's done through pure random chance, I prefer to go through the idea of this is the ship, this is what it can do, and I can teach you all about the individual types and whether or not they're worth putting into your fleets one by one. There's a whole playlist of these on this channel, so if you do enjoy this, make sure to stick around, have a look through that playlist and see if there are any of the other ships that you already have. You might learn something quite interesting about them. Now, this video is sponsored by NetEase, and if you're concerned as to what that means in regards to the impartiality of my content, then please do click the link to my Discord in the description down below. There's a public release statement there that will explain everything. Basically, I love this game, I was playing it before the developers contacted me, and I'm just super happy to be able to make content for it, and I maintain complete creative control over every single video that I post. Anyway, with all of that said and done then, let's jump right into today's blueprint breakdown, which is another one of the frigates, the Antonius Consortium Carillion. Now, some of you may have already watched a video that I put out recently on the Carillion Recon Frigate and why it's one of the best ships in the game that you're probably not using. And if you have watched that video, then look in the description down below for the timestamps. You can jump ahead to the other variants there, because most of what I'm going to say now is pretty much what I said in that video, just with some flashy new graphics and things, since the devs have updated the game a little bit since then. Anyway, we're going to have a look at all three of these blueprints, and we're going to talk about what they do and why you might want to use them. Now we'll start then of course with the A-type, the Recon type, the Carillion Recon Frigate. This is the default version of the Carillion. If you unlock this blueprint, which is one of the ones that you can get in some of the starting crates um, when you first open up your account with Infinite Lagrange, um, it's a ship that a lot of people tend to get early on and are quite disappointed by because after all you've already got the FG300 Recon which is faster, has better warp speed and is cheaper at only 3 command points whereas the Carillion Recon is 4 so why on earth would you ever want to build this when you're guaranteed to have the FG300 Recon before you get this one? Well, ultimately, if you're using this for recon, well, you absolutely can do. I just don't. I still stick with the FG300 for things like liaising and scouting and things like that. The recon frigate, believe it or not, is actually considerably better as a tank in your fleets, by which I mean it's the ship that is going to be absorbing most of the enemy's firepower. And you might say, hang on a second, Benzie, are you high right now? Because the, <laughs> the Carillion Recon, it's a frigate, it's only got 5 armor, and its HP is a pitiful 7,640. Surely that's what the FG300 armor type's for. Well, yes and no, they both tank in very different ways, and eventually I will do a blueprint breakdown on the FG300 series. But What's important to note about the uh, Carillion Recon Frigate is its evasion. If we go in here to the propulsion system and have a look at its info here, you can see this 35% here is increase ship evasion 35%. Now, I'm not going to go into heavy details as to how exactly evasion works. I'm sure Damfire's done a video on that. He's brilliant at explaining mechanics like this, and it's just not worth my time to go over absolutely everything here. But basically, this is a 35% increased chance of an sh incoming shot missing your ship. It makes you harder to hit, basically. And 35% is extraordinarily high. Then if we go into the system and look at the enhancements, we go past the cruising speed and the warp speed, we have the ability here to increase our ship's evasion even further. I think it's a full 8% there at full training, which is a lot of extra evasion. And then if we come right to the end, there is the evasive maneuvers strategy, and this is absolutely the, st uh, the strategy that you want to get in here. You get 10 enhancement points onto the Carillion Recon as quickly as possible, you grab this, then you go back for the emergency evasion system enhancement. What this does is when the ship's HP falls to 20%, you increase the evasion by 50% for 40 seconds. Basically, this means that with all of these skills and on here, you're going to be avoiding most of the shots that come your way. Frigates are already difficult to hit for things like cruisers and above anyway, um, but then when you add in the amount of evasion that the Carillion Recon Frigate has, it just dodges all of the shots that are coming its direction. And when eventually enough of the shots have managed to glance and take it down to 20%, it becomes a ghost. 
and it just sits there for those 40 seconds taking next to no damage whatsoever. It is an excellent ship. Early on when I start in the game, when a new server opens, one of the first ships I will build is literally two or four Carillion Recon Frigates, and I'll start building other frigates behind them, because whilst the Carillion Recons are taking all of the firepower, nothing else is being shot at, and it is just exceptional. Like, yes, you can go for things like the Near Defense Cannon System, you could even add some enhancements into the Rapid Fire Cannon here, the Anti-Ship Cannon, but when you're looking at a pitiful Anti-Ship Firepower there, 1575, I just don't see why you would bother. Put this at the front, it absorbs all of the shots for everything else in your fleet, um, all your other frigates at least, um, and it just works so well as a tank there. It's a little bit misleading actually that the game gives it a B ranking for survivability. This really should be an S ranking. It is an incredibly survivable ship or at least an A ranking. I find these stay alive a lot longer than FG300 armor types um, and so they make excellent tanks in a fleet where you've got frigates. If you've got frigates you don't want getting shot at, put some Carillion recons up front at least until you get the special type but we'll talk about those later on. The B-type for the Carillion is the Heavy Cannon type, and this is a little bit of a beast. Essentially, we've taken a standard Carillion Recon, we still have that 35% evasion basic as part of the hull bonuses, by the way, but we've swapped out the propulsion system that we had before. You'll notice that there's no enhancements here to evasion, we don't get that really awesome strategy. What we get instead, though, is a whopping great big cannon, the CG2238 Carillion K Dual Cannon Heavy Bow Battery. This is a bit of a beast for a ship of this size. First point to note, the Carillion is only five points. Five command points to build one of these things. This is not at all an expensive ship in regards to command points or indeed the materials required to build it. Our attack priority still has destroyers and frigates at the top, then moves to carriers, battle cruisers, and cruisers. This is a projectile cannon that prioritizes small ships, but then goes after the big stuff afterwards. And it's also fairly easy to adjust this as well. It doesn't require much in the way of weapon blueprints. Standard cannon blueprints are all it takes. Um, and you can level that up to maximum fairly quickly. And you'll notice that that heavy cannon system has a fairly monstrous firepower here. Basic, 3,342. That's a little bit lower than perhaps we've seen on the Reliat, but its enhancement is a much higher scale at 2,388, giving us that total of 5,730. That's a lot of DPM for a frigate of this size. Now, looking at the enhancement, there's a couple of different things here that you can go for. I'll come back to the heavy ammo strategy in just a moment. Being a cannon, of course this is a projectile weapon, the alpha damage is important because we need to clear as much of the target's armor as we can do in order to apply damage. Therefore, the barrel enhancement and the ammo enhancement, which increase all cannon damage by 10% apiece, are absolutely your go-to things first of all with this. Then you can start having a look at things like the ammo loader enhancement or the barrel heatsink enhancement that reduce the weapon system cooldown um, to help you fire that a little bit faster. But start with that alpha damage first of all. You'll notice that then I've gone for the increased weapon system hit rate against frigates and destroyers, and that's because we've got a heavy cannon. This is basically a cruiser-sized weapon, and it does struggle to hit frigates and destroyers. And because the target priority of this particular weapon is to start with frigates and destroyers, it misses an awful lot early on. So we want to get that hit up so that we can start punching those out of space and focus on the real targets. There is an all cannon hit rate by 2% as well that will of course affect both against the frigates and destroyers and anything larger. I just personally prefer to go for the frigate destroyer hit rate because we can get rid of those ships quickly. It's a 15% increase there where it's only a 10% at full training against everything. So it's a 10% against everything or 15% specific frigates and destroyers. And the idea is that I want to get rid of those frigates and destroyers quickly to start shooting at the real meaty stuff. At which point... I'm hitting fine anyway. I find that this doesn't really help in a fleet that is just cruisers. If you hit a point in the game, though, that essentially you're, fought, you're, you're fighting against just cruisers, then yeah, obviously swap this out and start going for the ones that affect hit rate against everything. Once you're at that point where no one's really using frigates and destroyers, like your PvP opponents are all using cruisers and up, um, and the privateers are all using cruisers and up, drop that firing assistance enhancement, go for the fire control computer enhancement instead. 
The final one here at the end is the focus on heavy targets, which prioritizes heavy targets to begin with battle cruisers and battleships. Now this can be useful if you've got enough firepower aiming at those battle cruisers. Um, obviously, battleships aren't in the game at the time of me making this video, but if you've got enough firepower taking those battle cruisers out quickly, that can be useful. But I like the fact that the Carillion Heavy Cannon works amazingly well against cruisers. So I try to rush past the frigates and destroyers and get it to start shooting at cruisers. And you'll see, when the target is a cruiser, it increases its damage by 60% and its attack duration by 30%. You might be thinking, hang on a second, this isn't going to do all that much because cruisers have a decent amount of, of armor and that 5,000 damage isn't all that much. Yeah, but when it, it becomes a lot more when you multiply it by 60% and increase the attack duration by 30%. That is a humongous increase to DPM, and it means that the Carillion Heavy Cannon will chew through cruisers once it starts to shoot at them. Just, you kind of want to get through everything else first of all. This really does shine once you are at that mid-stage where you're getting a lot of cruisers, but not much in the way of battle cruisers or carriers, like one or two per fleet at max. And you have other things that will help you take out those carriers and battle cruisers quickly, so that the Carillion can start focusing on cruisers. And of course, if they've got frontline cruisers then you're going to be shooting at those even whilst there are battleships etc battle cruisers etc still out there doing their thing it's ultimately not the best in class for this role i won't lie but it is solid at it if you have the carillion heavy cannon frigate and you want to use it against cruisers or battle cruisers there are plenty of ways you can do so and it will serve you well it's not quite as good as say the eris heavy cannon um, and i would say that the reliat ultimately does a little bit better as well and um, once you hit that sort of mid to end game point but for killing just cruisers if for example you know you have an opponent who is sending out cruiser fleets to attack uh, your bases and mining installations etc then sending the carillion heavy cannon type is an absolute must as it will melt through cruisers at a rate of fire that you just simply would not believe. Finally then we have the C variant for the Carillion, which is the special type and let's be honest that name really doesn't give us much information at all. We get a lot more information instead from the combat role section here at the bottom right which gives the Carillion special type a S rank for survivability, something that I said the recon type probably should have, yet the recon only got a B, so perhaps we are in for something truly special here. Let's break this down. Basically, if we go into the propulsion systems for the Carillion, you'll notice that we still have that basic 35% evasion that we've seen on previous Carillion hulls. That is something that is just baked into the Carillion as standard. 35% evasion. Please bookmark that information in your brain. 35% evasion as standard. If we look into the propulsion systems enhancements, you'll notice we don't get that strategy or the ability to enhance that evasion like we did on the recon. So if the recon could get massive evasion and still only got a B rank, how on earth does the special get an S rank? Well, that comes down to the two new systems that are strapped onto this thing, the warning system and the information jamming system. Let's start, first of all, with the warning system, the XI-3550 situational awareness system. Now, this as standard, before we look into any enhancements, reduces the hit rate from missiles by 30% and reduces the hit rate from torpedoes by 40%. Now remember, we've already got 35% evasion, which means this is an incredibly hard to hit ship to begin with. It's a frigate, which makes it a small target. It then has 35% evasion, then it has reduced hit rate to enemy missiles and torpedoes, which means that they are going to struggle to hit it using either of those. Then, if we come into the enhancements, we get a couple of really nice ones here, and one questionable one. Let's look at the questionable one first of all, an enemy target warning. This reduces the target selection time of the main weapon system by 14%, and make no mistake, this is the Carillion's weapon that it's talking about here, that you can make it so that the Carillion has a reduced targeting time, which is kind of pointless considering the Carillion Special Frigate has almost no weaponry to speak of, like there are better options out there if you want firepower. 
this is not it. Instead, we have things like the counter-attack info gathering and the attack flash warning. Now, the counter-attack info gathering gives us a 15% reduction to the chances of being hit by direct fire weapons. Direct fire weapons are things like enemy cannons, pulse weapons, ion cannons, rail guns, anything that, you know, requires them to actually point and aim at you. Um, 15% reduction to the chance of being hit there. Again, on top of the 35% basic evasion. And if you're thinking, hang on a second, the missiles and torpedoes got 30%, why is this only 15? So because we've also got the attack flash warning. This is hit by slow weapons. Basically, this improves the fire monitoring of enemy ion cannons and rail guns and syncs up with the engine system, allowing for more responsive evasive maneuvers. Now, slow weapons, ion cannons and rail guns also count as direct fire weapons, which means if you're being shot at with an ion cannon or with a rail gun, for example, you are getting the 15% reduction, the 25% reduction and the 35% evasion. If you're being hit with missiles, you've got the 35% evasion and 30% missile reduction, and if you're being hit by torpedoes, it's a 40% reduction for the torpedoes and 35% evasion. The only thing that actually has a chance really of hitting you are basic cannons and pulse weapons. And even then, you've still got that 35% evasion to begin with and a further 15% on top of that. So yeah, okay, their cannons and pulse weapons are the most likely to hit you, they're still not likely to hit you. As for everything else, yeah, they're just going to miss repeatedly. And that's just the warning system. Let's move into the information jamming system because this just gets even cooler. Because, oh look, we've got another 20% evasion on top. So all of those numbers I've been giving you beforehand, like the 30% the, the for missiles and 35% evasion, it's actually 55% for the evasion once you add that all together. Yeah, this is just why this thing just does not get hit by anything. Let's look at its enhancements. So, we have a strategy, the active interference. This activates a jamming assist a system and increases your evasion by 90% every 75 seconds for 20 seconds. So, basically, for 20 seconds, nothing can hit you. Nothing is going to hit you for those 20 seconds, and then it goes on a 75 second cooldown, and then it just does it again. It doesn't need you to go down to 20% health like the recon frigate does. It just does it, constantly time and time again they sit there and they struggle to hit you whilst you're at basic and um, like on your standard evasion and with the warning system and then the active interference strategy procs and just nothing hits you and at that point whilst that's going you'll find that any of your logistics frigates any of your support types that have like repair uavs are pulling up what pathetic little damage they've taken anyway since building these i don't honestly think I've lost one. I tend to run these with the Noma M470 support type, um, and I just don't think I've lost a single Corillian Special Frigate since building them. I think the five that I'm currently using in my fleet are the five that I originally built. They are that good. We then have the Guidance Detection Jamming and Visual Signal Camouflage. I'm going to put these side by side to talk about these. You notice I've enhanced the Guidance Detection Jamming not the visual signal camouflage, but there's no strong reason for that. This is one you swap between as needed. If you honestly think that the direct fire weapons are going to be more of a problem, remember um, that we've only got a 15% on top of our usual massive evasion, so we've got 35% evasion, 20% evasion, then 15% for direct fire weapons, you can go for this. But I was going up against a guy who was using a lot of missile ships recently, AC-721 missile types, um, winged hussar missile types, reliots, stealth types, things like that. So I went for the reduced uh, chance of being hit by guided weapons, which is missiles and torpedoes. Remember, you've got 30%, 35% evasion, 20% evasion, then 30% or 40% missile and torpedo, then another 20% on top of that. It just, uh, the, the chances of being hit by anything are absolutely minimal, then the active interference goes off and you just laugh as everything flies past them. The Carillion Special Frigate is just insane. This is one of the best tanks in the game. The frigates, just you put one of these at the front of a group of frigates and nothing is getting hit. Like, I run a fleet that is five Carillion special, fr special Frigates, tw uh, ten of the Carillion, uh, so the uh, the Reliat Stealth, ten Reliat um, of the Torpedo type, and then I think it's six 
of the M470 support types to heal up everything and just nothing dies. That is an excellent scout fleet that will wipe out miners and will actually take out most things that come up against it. And I use a very similar fleet with a couple more bits and pieces here and there as well. Um, if I want to take out privateer bases that are inside asteroid fields and stuff like that, this is one of those blueprints that you pray that you get in a box. It is that good. If, like me, you like using frigates and destroyers, this is one of those that you are constantly going to have built. I've got uh, five of them in active service currently. I will often have ten of them built to run two separate fleets being headed by them. Just, ah, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say about this ship. It is... It may not be my personal favourite ship overall. I, the Reliat still takes that because I just love all three variants of it, whereas I'm not over... You know, I don't use the recon type anymore, um, and the heavy cannon type is very situational. But the special type for an individual is probably, in my opinion, one of the best ships in Infinite Lagrange. It is insanely good. It is well worth pumping every point you can into that warning system, into that information jamming system. Heck, I've even put points in the armour. Here I went for the energy neutralization, so that if I do get hit and it's by anything that uses energy, it's a 10% reduction to the damage I take, and I've got that additional 20% HP as well, just so I stay alive. Oh, good, good. It's, it's insane. It is insane. I cannot recommend this ship enough. If you happen to get the special type, it is just some of the most fun you can have with digital spaceships. I just... <laughs> I love it. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. If you are using the Carillion at all in any capacity, perhaps you think I've missed something. Let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what your favourite ship is, what your favourite type of the Carillion is. What do you do with these ships? How do you take them down? Like, if you go up against a fleet of special types, what on earth are you using to try and deal with that? Other than, I guess, SC002s, uh, Balancer Andersons, and things that are, you know, re reduce evasion by their aircraft or something like that. I don't know. I don't know, I just, I love this ship. This and the Reliat are my two favourite frigates in the game. Um, I love them, they twin together so beautifully well. Um, like seriously, just put 10 special frigates, uh, 10 Carillion specials and 10 uh, Reliat stealths together into a fleet and yeet it at something and watch how long it survives. It's mad good fun. Anyway, folks, thank you for your support. Thank you for watching this one right the way to the end. Happy sailing and see you in Infinite Lagrange.